Good morning, brethren, sisters, church of the living God. Hello. The time of recording this, uh, three, uh, two minutes to ten, my time. Don't know what I'm going, to, what this video is going to be called, but um, get your authorized version of the scriptures, uh, please. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to John chapter 14. John chapter 14 in your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow along word by word, verse by verse in the scriptures with me. Okay? John chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, because I'm the same. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He's making a reference unto the catching away. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Now remember, Jesus Christ is the resurrection. Okay? Hold your place here and go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11, <clears throat> verses 25 on to verse 26. John chapter 11, verses 25 on to verse 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Jesus Christ is the resurrection. Okay? He is the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? We were purchased by his blood. Alright? Go back to John chapter 14. Verse 5. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. But, <laughs> I love this. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Believest thou not, that I am in the believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. God is made up of three spirit, soul, and body. You and I, we are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay, spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the body. Okay, spirit, soul, and body. One God comprised of three spirits, one body. Okay? 
And when you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. The works that we do, we do through the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwelling within us. Okay? And remember, the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ lasted three years. And there are those, for example, Brother Brian has been in ministry for about, what, ten years now? Over a decade? Okay? There are those out there who have a longer ministry than what our Lord Jesus Christ uh, did on the earth, okay? But his ministry lives on through his body, the church of the living God, see? Verse 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, if ye love me, keep my commandments. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, go to John 15, verses 1 on verse 8. Okay? This is important. I am, John 15, verses 1 on verse 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. <clears throat> Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, now look at that, look at that, look at verse 5. He that abideth in me, and I in him. How many people out there claim to be saved, but yet they don't abide in Christ? And is Christ abiding in them? You know, you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 you see specifically that um, someone who was of the church of the living God got involved in sin, grotesque sin, okay? Yes, and Paul said to hand such a one over for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, okay? We all know about that, okay? But Verse 5 is very pivotal. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. See, when you are saved, born again, and converted, you are sealed. You have the Holy Ghost within you. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwells within you. Okay, he's there. 
He's in you. Are you abiding in Him? How do you abide in the Lord today in this dispensation? Line up your life according to the Scriptures. Okay? You can say many, many things. You can profess a good profession. You can say all the right things. But does what come out of the mouth match the way you walk your walk in all facets of your life? See, many people can say a lot of things. Many people can even say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh as though that were a proof thing to show that yes, that they are of the church of the living God. But yet they can say one thing. But yet the way they live says something entirely. And is there chastening in that life? <clears throat> Verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. You know, hide his word in your heart. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Look at verse 7. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Now many heretics especially those of the metaphysical mind science type, you know, the prosperity preachers, stuff like that, okay? They, uh, and those that stem from the law of attraction, uh, you know, Joel Osteen's religion, right? There are those out there who say, if you believe it and you pray about it, God's going to answer it. Well, doesn't it say right there? If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And what do these prosperity preachers, these metaphysical mind science people, preach? Ask God for a big house. Ask God for the for a fine boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. There's a problem with that. There's a problem with that. That's all flesh. Go to 1 John 5. 1 John 5. <clears throat> 1 John 5. 1 John chapter 5. Verses 9 on to verse 15. 1 John chapter 5. Verses 9 on to verse 15. Sorry if you heard my uh, house alarm going off. <laughs> First John chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 15. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. And we have that witness, by the way, those of us who are saved, born again, converted, Church of the Living God, we have the witness, you know, the Holy Ghost living within us, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, the Holy Ghost. Okay? He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because he believeth not the, he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Look at that verse again. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. 
He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Hmm. Because he believeth not the record, the scriptures, that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? That's, that's what that is referring to. Okay? And this life is in his Son. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the resurrection. God is all. Okay? He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Pay attention. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And see right there, the prosperity people say, well, it's God's will to bless you, to give you the best of this world. Is it? Uh, I seem to remember in Romans, uh, the Lord through our our Apostle Paul, our Lord Jesus Christ through Paul says uh, to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be like the world. And you got these metaphysical mind science people uh, telling you that God wants to give you the best of everything, like Joel Osteen. And the prosperity twits, okay? I don't think so. What does it say? And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. God, see, God wants us, you and I, Church of the Living God, to not resemble this at all okay at all okay we are to be led by the spirit the spirit of truth the comforter the holy ghost and the lord jesus christ god our father is that spirit the lord is that spirit okay we are to be led of the spirit but there are two prevailing spirits well there are more than that but for the sake of this there is the Spirit of God, and there is that Spirit of Antichrist, which is in the world. Go to Mark chapter 8. Go to Mark chapter 8. See, the things of the Spirit of God that will guide us will not necessarily guide us onto things of the world. Now, God will give us these things of the world because he knows that we need them. Okay? Yes, he will. He will provide shelter, clothing, food. Paul admonishes us, admonishes us, beg your pardon, having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. Anything else is a luxury. But see, Satan is all about the flesh. Satan is all about the skin suit. That's all he's about. That's what he does. That is his focus. This. Okay? Go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. We will be reading verses 27 on to verse 28. Mark chapter 8, verses 27 on to verse 28. 
And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? What does man say that Christ is? Think about that. Oh, he's a good teacher. He was a prophet. He's one of three gods. Yeah. And they answered, John the Baptist, who himself said he was not the Christ. But some say Elias, Elisha. And others, one of the prophets. Men say that What? Jesus is a prophet, a good teacher, one of three gods. They diminish him. They lower him. They don't see him as he truly is. The Father. Totally, completely God. And he saith unto them, verse 29, But whom say ye that I am? Now see, this is not giving place onto relativism. Relativism is making a judgment based upon your own perception. Okay? It's not what he's talking about. They out there see Jesus Christ as an errand boy. Someone who teaches people, according to these devils, their Jesus teaches you how to have peace with your sins. Their Jesus doesn't judge. Their Jesus loves everything and everybody. Their Jesus is the son of perdition. Not truly God. So when he says, and he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? His disciples, those who are his. Because he knows whose are his. And Peter answereth and saith unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying open and he spake that saying openly. And Pope Peter <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> you weren't expecting that. Sorry. But when he uh, and he spake that saying openly, I, I apologize for that. And he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he, Jesus, had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, pay attention, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men, fleshly. See, Satan wants to get you to have your attention on the things of the world of things pertaining simply to the flesh and not to the spirit. Hence, if Satan can get any one of you to turn your attention away from the spirit, can you know, comparing spiritual things, the Lord that lives within you with spiritual things, the scriptures, if he can get your attention away from that and get it focused on things of the world and things of men, he, he got a foothold there, see. And this right here, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And it is not that Satan is a fan of man, no. If Satan can get someone to turn their attention away from the things of the spirit and be solely fixated on the things of the flesh, you know, covetousness, which is idolatry, okay? 
He has gained a small victory. Yeah, he's not going to win the war, but he gets a foothold in the sea. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Put down your flesh. Deny you. He must increase. You, I, must decrease. See, you have to put the Lord above anything else in your life, including yourself. For who will, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Save his life. Not die to self, not die to the flesh, but indulge in it. While all the while saying, God's grace covers it all. I just believe, therefore I can go on living as the world. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. See, these who bring persecution against the true church of the living God, the body of Christ, okay, they've saved their life by remaining in something that our Lord has called us out of, that we are to be separate from. We are to abide in him, not abide in the world, see. Think about this. Every single one of these easy believism heretics, right? All these Christians in the church buildings, they've saved their life. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. All the while claiming to be you know, Christians. But they want to be like the world. There's no separation. There's no holiness. Being other than separate then. Their standard is whatever they feel. Whatever they feel. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. You're, you're to die to yourself and to this world. You are to be dead. Okay? You are to be dead. Dead unto this. Dead unto this. And that's a daily struggle. That takes daily prayer. Daily. Being in the scriptures. It's not a one and done thing. It's a constant 24 hours, hours a day, 7 days a week struggle. War. We are to be at war with our flesh. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation... Now granted, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He was talking specifically about that generation. He was addressing before our instruction in righteousness. <laughs> Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Also put into this someone who is actually saved, born again. But yet, still is of the world. Doesn't want to give up the things of the world, though he be saved. You read First and Second Corinthians in its entirety. It is addressing in its entirety, those two books, is addressing those of the church and the living God who get all messed up with things of the world and there's no separation
Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. You don't want to live a life of separation, of holiness, being other, getting out, but you want to have your cake and eat it too? Have the best of both worlds? Paul tells us that if any man's work be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. That was Brad eyes, excuse me. Okay? When you are truly saved and born again, you come to him on his terms, broken and contrite. And in the fear of the Lord, you cry out for his mercy and beg him for forgiveness. Okay? He saves you. He saves you. And you are sealed. There again. Those of the church of the living God can do exactly anything and everything any of the lost, any of the world, any of those who are professing Christians, they can do whatever they can do. We can. See, there needs to be that difference there. And think about this. If you're of the church of the living God and you are uh, in sin, living in sin, you're ashamed of our Lord and of his words. Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Are you abiding in Christ? Go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 15. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Money. What does money pertain on to? Things of this world. Things of the flesh. Okay? Money is equated with this, the things of this world. Okay? So the scriptures say you cannot, no, no servant can serve two masters. Okay? And I know those who call themselves Christians who love money. Love money. But see, money, and we're going to look at this. We're going to look at this in uh, Genesis chapter 17 where the word money first appears, okay? Money is there for the things of the flesh, for the things of this world, okay? That's what money is for, not for things of the spirit. Yes, money can be used in such a way, yes, yes, but money was introduced for man for the things pertaining onto the flesh. And we're going to see that. We're going to see that. That's why you can't love money and God. Okay? You can't. Because who truly, who truly is allowed to have the reins of the money system? Who's being allowed? True riches and wealth come from the Lord, yes. Yes, but look at what's going on right now. <coughs> the purposeful destruction of the economies to bring in the mark of the beast. You go ahead and figure that one out on your own time. But let's continue. 
And the Pharisees also, Pharisee, tradition, scripture, Catholic. And the Pharisees also who were covetous. Whoa. There you go. Heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Yeah. But God, God knows your hearts. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination. Go back to Mark chapter 8. Check that out again. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Verse 33. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Verse 15 in Luke chapter, what is it, 16? And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts, because he does. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. And what does Satan savor? The things that be of men. To turn man against God by having man think in his own heart that he is his own God. Go to 1 Timothy now. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter six. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. You and I are servants. We're under the yoke under the yoke of Christ. Count their own masters worthy of all honor. There is one master, even Christ. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Yeah. And they that have believing masters, pertaining unto things of the flesh, let them not despise them because they are brethren. But rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, separation, He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy. I want what he wants. I want what he has, or whatever. That's envy. Thank you, brother. Strife, railings, evil surmisings. And this is coming from one who does not abide in what? If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Abiding in Christ. Being separate. Holy. Other. Okay? 
He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the, of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. And this gain, what is this gain? Money? Fame, popularity, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. It's not just that. Oh yeah, that's definitely there. But see, the love of this bleeds down like the pyramid effect. And we are told what? From such withdraw thyself. The prosperity people. They say that godliness um, comes with great gain, such as worldly possessions. That's not what the scriptures tell us. But see, these guys are banking on people's ignorance of the scriptures for them to buy it. Ooh, beg your pardon. <laughs> well, most of the times they use a Bible, not the scriptures. There is a difference between the Bible and the scriptures, dear brother, sister. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. We got it. Hold your place here. Go to Job. We have to, we have to go to Job. Have to, you have to see this. You have to see this. In uh, two different dispensations is this mentioned. Job chapter 1, verses 20 on to verse 22 after Satan was allowed to take all of Job's worldly possessions in one fell swoop. Job chapter 1, verses 20 on to verse 22. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. We ain't taking nothing out, obviously. See, these people who adhere to the metaphysical mind science teaching, the mind science said, uh, if you believe it, you can achieve it. If you think you are, you are. Very similar to euphemism. You know, change the name of a condition, therefore you change the condition. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what these easy believism heretics are. They have faith in their faith. Their faith is not on the Lord Jesus Christ. Their faith is on their faith. Hence, they are their own gods. That's pathetic. That's pathetic. It's very pathetic. Verse 8. And having food... Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And raiment, being clothed with Christ's righteousness, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh. Let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many 
foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition but the thorns and uh, the thorns and briars that choke the word and they become unfruitful look at this verse but they that will be rich now see people will say well Christ died to make us rich yeah in heavenly things in things pertaining to the spirit not of the things of this world okay there are those who have much riches but they ain't got nothing there are those who have a lot of stuff but they're poor see the rich that is being spoken of here is talking about worldly riches which is all these prosperity guys talk about and to this day uh, that the Beast Network that TBN which has a YouTube channel um, <laughs> I, I, to the, I am amazed that people still think that tithing you see people's ignorance of the scriptures that's one of Satan's greatest weapons because he's flooded y'all with a bunch of Bibles and then he set up his uh, his church Roman Catholicism mystery Babylon the Great and his army the Jesuit order to guide you on to his teachings the love of yourself and the love of flesh For the love, he will either love the one and hate the other, and vice versa. For the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. What does money pertain unto? Things of the flesh. And someone who has money and loves money Think about it. Think about these people who are rich in this world and call themselves Christians. I know of actually quite a few who will boast to you of being millionaires. Where's their first love? How would they react if all of a sudden once the economy cla uh, collapses and they lose all their money? What's their life going to be like? See, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Because the root of all evil here that money gives, the love of it, is the love of self. It's a form of pride. Money, unfortunately, is a necessity for today, yes. But you are not to love it. And those who love it, but they that will be rich for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows the love of money is the root of all evil because it stems onto pride look at how Look at what a great Christian I am. I have given away all kinds of money. Remember how Jesus noted how they, the scribes, the Pharisees, and put in a bunch uh, out of their uh, abundance into the offering or whatever. And then there was a poor widow who put in two mites. And the Lord said of that poor widow who put in two mites, she put in more than anybody. Because out of, of her, out of her, out of her necessity, gave all that she had, even all her living. That's why, in reality, the smallest of gifts are the ones that I believe are the one is the one that the Lord blesses the most. But now note a contrast. 
But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, separation, faith, love, patience, meekness. Hold your place here and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 8 on to verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 11. For we would not, brethren, have you, ign have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raiseth the dead who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Yea, oh excuse me, Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. And see, when you go back, go back now to 1 Timothy chapter 6. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money leads to self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency leads to what? Self-glorification. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Leads to pride. The love of money leads to pride. That's why it's the root of all evil. Because people who have money that they can throw away like that, they think they can buy anything. They even think they can buy faith. The, uh, these Christian uh, <laughs> prosperity twits, they tell you that you can buy favor from the Lord by giving them money. Pride is a very powerful sin. <laughs> which is linked intrinsically to the flesh, which Satan savors. Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now see, profess the good profession among many witnesses, but he's admonished in verse 11, follow after righteousness, godliness, separation, holiness, okay? Faith, love, patience, and meekness. That is in you while in, in abiding in Christ. You will have a good profession. Not in one that you just merely say but in the example of how you live according to the scriptures. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times which in his times he shall shew, who is the blessed and only potentate, King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting, to whom be honor and power everlasting, amen. Now, check this out. 
charge them that are rich in this world. Hmm. Verse 9, but they that will be rich. Verse 17 defines verse 9. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. See, you want to know the definition of verse 10, you simply keep reading. Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, not pertaining to your salvation, but because you are saved. You're not doing good works to save yourself or to stay saved. No, you are ambassadors. You have the word of reconciliation. You have the ministry of reconciliation. You see. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Willing to communicate. We'll poke a, little, uh, a couple of you now. You know you've been put into a situation before, and when that situation has come and gone, you feel it in your gut. I should have said something. I should have spoke up. That burning in my bowels, that burning in my bones, but I wasn't willing to communicate. Do you sometimes you have that, I don't want to waste my time. Now granted, there are situations where you are casting your pearls before swine. But how many of you are willing to communicate? Or do you make it, well, I don't know this, I don't know that. Um, you're saved, born again, converted, right? You have the Lord living within you, right? Doesn't that count for something? If, if you're in a situation and the Lord is pushing you to speak up, Speak! But be careful. Be careful. Is it of the Lord or is it of your flesh? And do you know the difference? Don't, don't worry. We're going to touch on that. Let's continue. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain blah, 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 babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Grace be with thee. Amen. Profane and vain babblings. Uh, a brother who I share a partial kindred with sent me a whole bunch of stuff about something that he encountered with two fakes, which looking over it was, wow, man. <laughs> I commend this brother. I commend this brother for he, um, 
he stuck with that a lot longer than I would have. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and hence today we are running into, O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. One second, brother. Sorry about that. Which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. I had to finish that up. Now, go to Isaiah chapter 55. This thing about money. This thing about money. Go to Isaiah chapter 55. The love of money is the root of all evil. And we have, as we have just read, we see why it is the root of all evil. Because people can be, become high-minded and put their trust on money, which is given to us for the things pertaining onto this world, for things of the flesh. Okay? Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Verses 1. Let's read this whole chapter. Isaiah 55. Ho! Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money. Come ye, buy, and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Go to Revelation. Revelation. I think you know where we're headed with this one. Revelation chapter. Come on, fingers work with me. Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> Verse 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come! And let him that heareth say, Come! And who, and let him that is a thirst, Come! And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Go back to Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, for out of your belly shall flow living waters. What our Lord Jesus Christ said unto the woman at the well, that I would give them living water. O oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy, and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money, without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, for that which is not needful? And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me, ye who are heavy laden. And I will give you. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my, what is it? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, 
a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Again, God doesn't save you so you could remain in this world and live as the world, people. And see that again, that that that's what the easy believism heretics are teaching you. Oh, oh yeah, you, you shouldn't. Shouldn't be like that, but it's okay if you are. It's okay if you are. Because you're saved because you just believe. You see, you see, it's lunacy. No, no, no. If someone is a babe, if someone is a novice, if someone is ignorant, doesn't know any better, grace on, give them grace. But see, people who like to use the thing like, well, God knows my heart. It's usually, nine out of ten times, a self-defense mechanism because they have done something that they know is a contrary to the scriptures. And that they know that no one of the church of the living God ought to be doing. Hence, they will go to the defensive. Well, God knows my heart. Yeah, you behave like a devil. You speak like a devil. You are a devil, but God knows your heart. Right? Yeah, it's a defensive me mechanism. It's a defensive mechanism. And then you got the easy believism people saying, well, okay, you should be separate, but you don't have to be. Because you're saved. Again, God doesn't save you to keep you in that. Why, why would you believe that? Why? Why would anyone be foolish enough to believe such nonsense? Do you love your sin that much? You love that? This outside your window, your door? You love that? that much do you not do you not see what's coming down down the road and that right quickly you, you want to be a part of that huh <laughs> yeah 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 good luck with that buddy let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Thoughts. Our Lord says about anyone who looks upon a maid and lusts after her in his heart, has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Hence meaning... Showing you that your, your thoughts can be sin, people. And when money is involved, when someone loves money, remember, you cannot serve God and mammon. Okay? Look at Solomon. Okay? God gave him all that. Yes, he did. But see, Solomon loved many strange women. People who were not of his kindred, those who were not of Israel, and those women of other nations whom Solomon clave to in love, what did they do? They took away his heart, didn't they? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and praise the Lord for that. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. Who, has known, who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? 
Yeah, you ask, uh, I'd like to hear uh, Sosa's response to that, that devil. Sosa, Arturo Sosa, the black pope, the most powerful man on earth. The one who many of you work for. As far as I'm concerned, probably many of you have had personal um, communication with. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. Peace. Not as the world giveth. Peace I give unto what our Lord said. Peace. Grace and peace. Paul makes mention many a time in his epistles about grace and peace. But see, the peace offered to you by Satan, who savors the thing of men, the thing of the flesh, uh, that of the flesh, okay? He teaches you how to have peace with your sin and not to mortify your flesh. That's what every single one of you devil, easy believism heretics do. Shame on you. Shame on you. You teach people how to be at peace with their sin. You have taught rebellion against the Lord. May he have mercy on you. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The mountains, high, hills, a little lower than the mountains, but still high. The trees, mountains, hills, and trees, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Mountains, hills, and trees are being are likened onto people in this passage. Okay? Can trees clap their hands? No. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name and for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Now, as I had said, let's go to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. First appearance of the word money. Money. Genesis chapter 17. Oh, Genesis chapter 17. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Father of many nations. Neither shall thy, thy name be, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. That's what the name Abraham means. Father of many nations. Okay. 
and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy singular seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And remember, salvation is of who? The Jew, the Hebrew, okay? The Jew came from the line of Abraham, okay, through Isaac. It is in Isaac his, your, his, uh, your seed is called. In Isaac, what God chose. God did not choose Ishmael. Ishmael came about by Abram taking upon himself and doing in his own flesh, trying to, to quicken, to uh, make the promise of God to come forth by his own doing. Okay, by Sarah, uh, by Sarah or Sarah saying, "Here's Hagar, an Egyptian. Go in onto her." Okay, see, he he tried to bring about God's promises by his own means, not waiting on the Lord. God chose Isaac, not Ishmael. And again, brethren, when you get into conversation with a Muslim, sooner or later you will get into that area. Remember that. Remember that. Let's continue. And God said to Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. And this is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Every man child every man have you heard that there is not not in scripture but according to man the world Satan there's such a thing as female woman circumcision you've heard about that haven't you guess who's notorious for practicing that the sons of Ishmael. Prove me wrong, unfortunately. Yeah. Circumcision of women. Ye hath God said. <clears throat> and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that, now here you go. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. There's the first appearance of money. And what do we see? Or bought with money of any stranger, not of God's choosing. Stranger. Not related to Abraham. Okay? Not of the Jew, you could say. You could say. Okay? But what was it to buy what? Or bought with money of any stranger, a man child. Buying someone. Purchasing someone. Kind of like how we are purchased by the blood of the crucified one. Kind of, you know. We are his purchased possession. That's the first appearance of money. Let's keep reading. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, 
that soul, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Because the circumcision made without hands wasn't there. That circumcision is Christ. Permanent resident. You know, the Holy Ghost, that seal. That's the circumcision of Christ. Circumcision made without hands. That wasn't there in this time. Okay? Eternal security. They were not eternally secure as we are today. Okay? That's what that means. Let's continue. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on upon his face, and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety year, years old bear? <laughs> yeah. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. See, like I said, God had promised him before this, and Ish, in his own will, in his own power, he sought to bring about God's promises his own way. That's why he said, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Abraham cared for his son Ishmael. Yes, he did. And yes, Ishmael is the firstborn of Abraham. Yes, he is. But he is not the promised one. Yes, Isaac. See, Satan savoreth not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Abram, uh, before this he was Abram, sought to bring about what God had promised him by his own means. Hence, someone loves money. You get high-minded. Oh, and I've seen people who have money the power that they think they have. I'm a millionaire. I, there's nothing that I can't get that I want. Good for you. Good for you. Your money perish with thee. Good for you. Good for you. And God said, Verse 19, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful. And will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. But. My covenant will I establish with Isaac. Which Sarah shall bear unto thee. At this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him. And God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every, ma every male among the men of Abraham's house, and then circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day, as God had said unto him. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. And all the men of his house, born in the house and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. So literally, the first appearance of money has relation with what? 
things of the flesh, things pertaining unto the flesh. What did we read in Isaiah chapter 55? And why do you spend your money on things that do, are not needful and do not profit you? Well, someone, well, I need that whatever 50-inch flat screen or whatever. That, that, oh, shut up. Shut up. Be quiet. See, the love of money is the root of all evil. You can get really high-minded on yourself and self-sufficient, proud, see? That's why if someone is actually of the church of the living God, because remember, Paul says, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Not many. Doesn't mean that none are. It doesn't mean that out there of our brothers and maybe sisters, don't know, but that does not mean that someone of the church of the living God can't be rich. But it's not many. Why? Think about how hard, seriously, brother, sister, think about how difficult it is for someone who has all he could get of this world's desire at his fingertips. That he held back nothing that his heart desired. He had more money than anyone could have ever had. Oh, Brad, that, that sounds like, yeah, Solomon. Doesn't it? Yeah. Read Ecclesiastes on your own time there, brother, sister. It's only 12 chapters. Hey, the, the 1st of July is what? Uh, Thursday, right? Read a chapter a day for the 12 days, okay? On the 1st, read Ecclesiastes 1 along with Proverbs 1 and Song of Songs 1, okay? Go ahead. It'll be very beneficial for you. But see, love of money, the root of all evil. You, you get that, right? But now, go to a very familiar portion of Scripture. Go to Luke chapter 4. And I ask you, in Luke chapter 4, what? What? was Satan's temptation all about upon our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? What was his temptation aimed at? Did Satan... <laughs> I have to ask, okay, this is a rhetorical question. Okay, so, did Satan know who Jesus was? Does Satan know who Jesus is? God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Did Satan know who Jesus is? Yeah. Did Satan know that Jesus is God the Father? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, prove that to, read Job 1 and 2, okay? Satan knew exactly who Jesus Christ is. Satan knows that Jesus Christ is the Father. Satan knows Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Satan knows that. So then, the temptation. What was Satan's, what was Satan tempting? Because, 
as we will see, God can't be tempted to do evil. Sin. God can't sin. And see, this is where the these wicked Trinitarians, you know, who like to degrade Jesus Christ, saying he is one of three gods. Okay? He's the one in the middle. He's not even the primost. Okay? This is where these wicked Trinitarians... Hey, if you're a Trinitarian and you don't know anything about that, there's a playlist of uh, Jesus as God the Father. You go check that out. Also check out uh, things on Brother Brian's channel about um, uh, the, 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 the Trinity is Satanic or something. Whatever the, uh, the, the it's whatever that whole playlist is of his. Okay, I can't think of it offhand. Okay, if you're confused about that, there's evidence and proof on this channel and on Brother Brian's. Go look it up. Okay. So again, I ask you, what was Satan tempting? He savored the things that be of men. Let's read this. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. We've covered this before. Let's do it again. It's not grievous for me, but it's needful. Especially what's coming down the road, brethren. It's very important that you keep these things in mind. So when you see someone who is claiming to be a Christian, you shall know them by their fruits. You judge them according to the scriptures. Luke chapter 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. One second, brother. I'm looking at my notes. Okay. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. Tempted of the devil, and in those days he did not. He did eat nothing. Now, after the death, burial, and resurrection, our Lord asked for a honeycomb. He ate a honeycomb and a piece of a broiled fish. He asked for one. He didn't need to. He ate because he wanted to. But guess what? You know this skin suit? This ages. This gets tired. You need to put food in it. And Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. God got hungry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, command this stone that it be made bread. Will God eat the blood, uh, uh, eat the flesh of bulls and drink the blood of goats? I might have, I just bradized that. Okay? If he were hungry, he would not tell thee. But yet, God is hungry? Yeah, because the flesh is weak. Don't worry, we'll get to Romans 8. Don't worry about that. Okay, let's continue. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, That man shall not live by bread alone. And here's a part that they take out of the Bibles. But by every word of God. You got an NIV, an ESV, New American Standard, or whatever. Uh, look that up. They take out. But by every word of God. Yeah. And the devil taking... Okay, now first, first temptation. What was the devil's temptation aimed at? Hunger. Being hungry is something of the flesh. Yes, we thirst for God's righteousness, but stones be made bread? It's of the flesh. And the devil taketh him up into an high mountain. And the devil taking him up into an high mountain shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. 
And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou, there, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. The love of money is the root of all evil. What's this temptation? The glory of the kingdoms of this world. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Satan was tempting him with power. This is God the Father he is talking to. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan knew who Jesus Christ is. Okay, so then, how did, what then, no. What is Satan addressing in these temptations? What is his main focus? Yeah. 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 And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Boy, didn't we hear that already today? For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now see our Lord's answer. It is written, it is written. Okay? It's in the scripture. Okay? Okay? But... You serve the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. He raises one up and he puts down another. Okay? Emotion comes from the Lord only. You know, keeping in mind Abram, who wanted to forward God's promises by his own doing. You get the tie in there? Verse 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and, there, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Ignoring the context. That's Psalm 91, by the way. You read the whole context. Okay? Satan was taking it out of context. Oh, wow. Imagine that. Imagine that. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Again, that pinnacle, when he set him up on the pinnacle to cast himself down. What was Satan's temptations aimed at? Hmm? You know, a lot of people can say a lot of good things. How do they live? Hmm? People can actually live a, a certain way while people are looking at them. How are they uh, within the four walls? That's why it takes time. That's why it takes time to discern fruit. Some of them out there just make it so obvious. You know, they put up false facades and act a certain way, you know. <laughs> James chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 16. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted, uh, tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any, any man. 
Well, he tempted Abraham. I have a whole video on that. If I can remember. If I can remember. I will put that video in the description box. About why God tempted Abraham. Okay? But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed because Satan savoreth the things that be of men not the things that be of God then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift, every good gift, and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So see, God cannot be tempted with evil. God cannot sin. Satan knew that. But what was his temptation aimed at? Flesh. Which is all Satan is about. The glorification of flesh. Living their faith led by the flesh. Which is what? These easy believism devil heretics, these coadjutors, and all these devils, are the ones in the church buildings. It's all about the flesh. It's a vanity fair. <laughs> Pilgrim's Progress. Read it sometime. Both parts, part one and part two. Okay. Go to Isaiah. Chapter 5. See, Satan's temptation. See, Jesus is the Father. Jesus is God. God cannot be tempted with evil. So then you're like, well, okay. Then what was Satan? Satan was going after the flesh. Go to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Oops, 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 oops. Isaiah chapter 5. Come on, fingers work with me. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 25. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's happening today, ain't it? Yeah. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Being wise, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, prudent. Prudence is equated with wisdom fearing the Lord. So, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes their own God, and prudent in their own sight. Again, they are their own God. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward. Have immense persons in admiration because of advantage? And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness. Your root is rotten when you live according to your flesh. Call yourself a Christian. And their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. 
every single one of these easy believism heretics, all these church building devils. Yeah, they despise the word of the Lord. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And God's anger, his wrath is coming upon this earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. And dear friend, If your flesh is the thing, is what is ruling your life and you're calling yourself a Christian, you're not saved. You're deceived. You understand? Yes, those of the church of the living God, we sin. We sin every day. Yes, we of the church of the living God have a struggle war with our flesh. We do. We truly do. Go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 15. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, It is vain to serve God. Your life doesn't need it. You, your life doesn't need change. You can go on living as the world. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? <laughs> Brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord? Oh, that, that, that's adding. What, what, what do they say? What, oh, oh, what's, what's what? Um, backloading works unto salvation. That's the statement of the devil. Because our Lord requires brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord. That is a requirement. Despite what these devils tell you. Despite what you in your flesh want to believe. Because you love your sin more than you love God. And now... We call the proud <laughs> happy for the love of money. It's the root of all evil. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. A contrast, a difference. Quite a contrast. Go to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. John 13, verses 31 under verse 35. John 13, verses 31 under verse 35. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. 
ye shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say, on, say to you, so now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, those of the church of the living God. Okay? We shall love unto the lost world by speaking to them of the scriptures. The Lord in us, the Holy Ghost, guiding us through the scriptures to speak his word unto the lost. That is how you show love unto the lost, by telling them the truth of the scriptures as led by the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that spirit. Not of your own machinations or whatever. Let's continue. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. You love the body of Christ. You prefer the church of the living God, your own, over that of the world. We are in the world. We are not of the world. And see, the devil twists this, of course, because he's all about flesh. He makes, Satan wants people to love their flesh, to love the things of the flesh. Perfect example. Sodomy. People want to, and there are those out there who are sodomites who are truly in love with someone of their own uh, sex, right? God hates that. God hates sodomy. Okay? But see, because Satan it's all about the flesh. His doctrine, Satan's doctrine that he teaches through his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuit order, and all her little daughters. He teaches you, Satan teaches you to love your sin and to be at peace with your sin. See, there's a big difference. Big difference. Go to First John chapter one. First John chapter one. First John chapter one, verses five on to verse ten. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. No darkness in God at all. No sin, no evil. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Look at that verse. You say you have fellowship with Jesus Christ. You love the church of the living God. Yet you're walking in darkness you lie and your breath stink we lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Again, I have to hit this again. You say you can go 24 hours from morning unto evening without any sin? Making yourself Christ-like for one day? What say the scripture? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, 1 John 2, verses 1 and verse 6. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Notice it doesn't say but, it says if, okay? We are to strive not to sin as the church of the living God, but guess what? Guess what? We're going to sin. We're going to sin. Your thoughts, remember, brethren, can be sin. That's why every day you confess your sins, ask for His mercy to cleanse you, to make you more separate, holy. You're saved, born again, yes. Converted of the church of the living God. That doesn't mean that you stop asking the Lord to have mercy upon you when you do something that is contrary to his word. Yes, you're saved. You're not going to lose your salvation. Oh, but you'll get chastised. You'll lose rewards. <laughs> you know who has a real problem with saying, I'm sorry? Lost sinners. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You mean we of the church of the living God have commandments to keep? Yeah. Yeah. Read Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Go ahead. God doesn't save you so you can go out there, number one, remaining, living as of this world, and living by what you think is right. No, 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 no. We have his commandments. For us today in this dispensation, located within the Pauline epistles, yes, but the instruction in righteousness is throughout. Okay? We don't keep the commandments to be saved. No. No. The Ten Commandments were there to show us that we are incapable of living according to God's perfect standard. But now that we are saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, we have commandments to keep. Yes. Not to stay saved. But remember. We are his ambassadors. Okay? If you truly love the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you will keep his commandments. Where, is it? Where are his commandments? The scriptures. And for us today, in this dispensation, where are our commandments? In the Pauline epistles. Like I said, Romans chapter 13. Read that on your own time, okay? Remember, it's not to be saved or stay saved. Okay? No. No. Again, God doesn't save you so you can stay in this filth out there without any government. Let's continue. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Keep his commandments. Live by the scriptures. Okay? You say that you know him, 
as through a relationship, and yet your life doesn't match up at all with his word, his commandments. <laughs> oh, but God knows your heart. Yeah, yeah. A reflex defensive action. Because they have done that which they know is contrary to the scripture. Yes, God knows your heart. Brethren, beware of someone who is constantly throwing at you, God knows my heart. I'm telling you, they're doing that to defend and to justify themselves for an action, whether by word or by things that they type or whatever it is. They're justifying themselves, defending themselves because they've done what they know is not right according to scripture. And when they're talking to someone who is actually of the church of the living God, it comes out even more. Doesn't it? Yeah. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Now, Christ never sinned. God can't sin. And how we today are to follow Christ the example given to us is by Paul, okay? We are to follow his example of following Christ. He saith, he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. How did Christ walk? How did Paul walk? We were, he was in the world, but not of the world, okay? A separated life. He was made, Paul was made all things to all men. Yes, made all things to all men. Okay? It didn't mean that he became as the world to win the world. That's insanity. That's heresy. Walking separate. See, Christ fulfilled the law perfectly because only God can okay Christ lived his life according as it was written you and I by the example given us of Paul are to live as it is written I'm, yeah I'm gonna beat this horse till it's bloody rank and stinks of putrefaction You heard of this Delta thing coming? The coin shortage? Ha! <laughs> if your walk ain't right with the Lord right now, you need to get that straightened out. Because when the stuff starts hitting the fan, beg your pardon for that, how you're going to be walking brother, sister is going to speak louder than anything that you'll be able to do. Go to uh, now chapter 4 verses 15 on to verse 21. Whoso, uh, John chapter 4 verses 15 on to verse 21. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. So see, someone just merely says something, and that shows that they are saved. Ha. <laughs> yeah. 
And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. So see, someone can say something. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But yet, is your life being lived according to the scripture? Huh? Huh? Is your life lining up here? See, that's just hot air coming out of your mouth. There's no root. It's all about the flesh with people like that. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. The fear here being talked about is the fear of man that bringeth a snare. We are to fear the Lord. Okay. We are to fear the Lord. The fear being referenced here is not about the fear of the Lord. Again, it's the fear of man. Because look at it again, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is separate, so are we in this world. Verse 19. We love him, because he first loved us. Loved. Note that past tense there. Loved us. He first loved us. How? How did he first loved us? Because he gave his only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved, past tense, the world that he gave. See, that's when you understand that Christ died on that cross because of what you did because of what you did and that he died buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures we love him because he first loved us it was your fault my fault that he went to that cross and he did that because he loved and he gave hence when the Lord shows you that truth when you come to him see when you come to him broken of your self-righteousness and pride and you have sorrow contrition because it's your fault realizing what he did on that cross for you, even despite of what you did to him. Hence, we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, those who are of the church and living God, okay? You're not my brother merely because you say you are. And you say and profess and have a facade but when no one is looking, oh, the real you comes out. Yeah. With all the evidence thereof. <laughs> if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he, ha for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Right there. Okay? I know of brethren who have big problems with other fellow brethren. And they struggle with that brother, you know. But at the end of the day, they know 
He's my brother. I, I don't like him. I don't agree with him. But he is my brother. I love him. <laughs> and, this is his, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Like I've said to you before, there are those out there of the church of the living God who don't like me. And to be fair, there are those out there of the church of the living God who I do not like. But that does not remove the truth that you are my brother and I am your brother. If a brother whom I do not like suddenly got a hold of me and asked me for help if I were able, if I could, I would help him. Or a sister, we would. Liking has nothing to do with it. Okay? Yeah, that helps. But we are commanded to love our own of the church of the living God. Part of his body. See? We are, to, that's our, we are commanded to do so. you got to really be careful with that. If there's someone of the church of the living God that you have a problem with, that happens. Okay? Look at Paul and Barnabas. They had a very heated disagreement and they went to sunder. They you know, went their different directions. And you hardly hear anything of Barnabas anymore, but you hear, of course, obviously, of Paul, right? But nonetheless, those were two saved brethren of the Church of the Living God. They went their separate ways. That happens, brethren. It happens. We're not all going to get along. When we're up there, this is when we're up with the Lord, it's different. Be why is that? Because this is not involved. <laughs> Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> People, see, up there, the brethren whom I have problems with and whom have problems with me of the church of the living God. Okay? And there are, there are those out there who have problems with me, who are saved. And I have problems with them. They're saved. Once, see, once this, the skin suit, is out of the equation, and we're up there, that changes everything. See? And now, yeah, 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 yeah. Romans chapter 8. How much time have I got? Oh, wow. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. <laughs> Good way to spot someone who is false is how they defend the flesh and how they live according to it. It takes time to discern and to get to see and whatnot, but it's very telling where someone is, their views, on how they view the flesh. See, because what is a Catholic? Catholics are all about the flesh, just like Satan is, who savoreth the things that be of men. Remember, unto the Catholic, they eat the perfectly round, sun-shaped bale cookie. They eat the flesh of Jesus Christ. Hence, the flesh saves along with the wine you know, to, that the priest turns into, you know, the blood that he turns into wine. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's all about fleshly things. Satan savoreth the things that be a man, not the things that be of God. And remember, Satan's temptation. Jesus Christ is the Father. God manifests in the flesh, okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? So, I mean, God can't be tempted with evil. What was Satan doing? Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 15. There is 
therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I was sitting a wicked thing before mine eyes. You're walking after the flesh. You give uh, a few more moments of listening to some devilish song, you're walking after the flesh. You haven't eaten in eight hours or five hours. You are, you're starving. You're walking after the flesh. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh now stop um, I, I have come across devils who are all about the flesh and this I, I have uh, I have attacked this issue now in many videos but think about Satan's temptation. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Oh, you wicked Catholic coadjutors, you're going to love this one. The flesh of Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Guess what? The flesh of God got hungry. He fasted for 40 days. He was hungry, wasn't he? The flesh of Jesus Christ. He, he felt those temptations to sin because of the sinful flesh. Yes. Yes, the flesh is sinful. God manifest in the flesh. Satan's temptation was aimed at the sinful flesh. But see, God cannot sin, neither can he be tempted with evil. So see, that's why God knows, that's why our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, knows exactly what it is you're going through with temptation see he he never sinned he can't sin but see he gets it because he's been there god manifest in the flesh what 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 does this say don't look at me what does this say god sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh the flesh is sinful. The spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. Satan was tempting the flesh. And then you get devils who lift up the flesh, who glorify the flesh, Catholics. And right here, Romans chapter 8, verse 3, clearly tells us what? God is sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh yes the flesh of Christ was what sinful flesh oh yeah that's what that says That's what that said. He got tired. He got hungry. He most likely sweat because of heat. Uh, he went to the bathroom. Okay. 
He probably had body odor, okay? Flesh fatigues, flesh is weak. God had to sleep while in the flesh. Because flesh is sinful, flesh is weak. And that weak flesh, look at Catholicism, that's exactly, that is exactly what Satan's main focus is. When you run into this in your own, on your own, in your own whatever you do, keep this in mind. When you come across someone defending the flesh, or that you got to be sinlessly perfect, that your flesh has to be well ordered, glorified flesh on earth. You take them here to Romans eight, especially verse three. Flesh is sinful. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Oh, yeah. God never sinned. He can't sin. But see, again, God understands and went through everything that you and I, with the temptations of the skin suit, he went through every single thing that you and I did. That we do with our temptations in the flesh. Hungry, thirsty, that kind of stuff. Fatigue. Okay? Now granted, our Lord wasn't tempted as we are, as, you know, lusting after flesh as man does. But nonetheless, he gets it. Let's continue. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things that are the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally, carnal, carne, fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And verse 7 right there is where you always catch these guys. Always. Because their mind is carnal. And it's, en it's what? It's enmity against God. They expose themselves over time. Because they are carnal, fleshly. They're all about the flesh. Church building people. They're all about the flesh. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, well Brett, we're, we're in the flesh. Uh, yes, we are. But are you living in the flesh? Meaning, is this controlling you? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the Lord is that spirit. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Who's righteousness? You have God living in you. Uh, know ye not that 
ye are the temple of the, of the Holy Ghost. God dwelleth in you. He who defileth the temple of God, him will God destroy. I'll get to that in another video coming up uh, tomorrow, uh, addressing something that a brother sent to me, uh, uh, which will be kind of a quicker video than this. But I'll, I'll talk more about that later. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. God's going to provide for you. He will quicken this flesh so that we can live according to the spirit according to the word. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mortify. Put down. When you have the church building people saying, live it up. And you have these easy believism heretics teaching people to be at peace with their sin. No change. It doesn't matter. You're saved. Yeah, you shouldn't do this, but go ahead. It doesn't matter. You're not going to lose your salvation. See, those people, they were never saved to begin with. And some of you, not of the church of the living God, those are the types of people that you're looking to. You're living in the flesh, ain't you? Yeah. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Through the Spirit, comparing spiritual things, the Lord living within you, with spiritual, the Scriptures. Through the Spirit. How do you mortify your flesh? First of all, you need the Scriptures. Okay? Well, first of all, you need to be of the Church of the Living God. You know, have the Lord living within you. Second of all, you need the Scriptures. Thirdly, you need to read the Scriptures. And live them. Not to save yourself. Not to stay saved. But to mortify. See, again, God doesn't save you. <laughs> God doesn't save you to keep you a jumbled mess. Worldly. He calls you out of Egypt. That you may be a peculiar people. Peculiar people. Something my wife keeps telling me. It's like, uh, you know, I really want us to be that peculiar people. So I know, baby. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father. Where we cry Abba Father. Now go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. We're almost done. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 on to verse 7. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. <laughs> Get the Jesuit jab so you can set your affection on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory, making reference of his second coming when he appears. 
okay? Mortify, put down, suppress. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For the love of money is the root of all evil, right? Idolatry, covetousness. Got a lot of money. Like Solomon did. Anything your little heart desires? If you can get it. Covetousness is idolatry. For which say for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them, when you were lost. When you were lost. And also to a contrast, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1 on verse 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. And look what's there. Covetous. Covetous leads to boasting. Boasting is a form of what? Pride. Proud. Blasphemers. You are your own gods. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. You want more than what the Lord has allowed. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Again, the love of money is the root of all evil. Is this not, I will be like the Most High? Having a form of godliness... A form of separation. But denying the power thereof. From such turn away. The power thereof. The power thereof. For of this sort are they that are they. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And what we just looked at in uh, Colossians about suppressing and mortifying, where the contrast is given to us in Second Timothy chapter 3, those who are after the flesh, And of course, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous. Aha! I caught myself, brother. Sorry. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous. There is no grievous. Grievous. Aha! Caught myself. Thank you, brother, for that rebuke. By the way, you know who you are. Thank you. Aha! Caught it. But for you it is safe. Beware of dogs who return to their own vomit. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are a circumcision which worship God 
in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Grievous. Not grievous. Grievous. Aha! Working on it. <laughs> but yes, we have no confidence in the flesh. Professing Christians. Their confidence is in their flesh. You're saved by your belief, right? You have faith in your faith, right? You have confidence in your flesh. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Gotta, gotta watch my time now. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful to the Lord, not to the flesh. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Meaning, he doesn't have his own standard. His standard is the standard of the Lord, not himself. He talks about that in Romans chapter 7. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Right there. Verse 4 explains. Verse 3. He doesn't judge his own self. The Lord does that. How does the Lord judge you? By examining yourself in the light of Scripture. You examine yourself in the light of Scripture. You don't have your own set of moral standards. You can, but ultimately, this is what you judge yourself upon. The Scriptures. Okay? And who wrote the scriptures? Man did. And shut up. God used man's hand, but who really wrote the scriptures? Do I even need the Lord? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. When it says, uh, judge nothing before the time, he's not saying not to judge according to the scripture, but beware of judging from the flesh, from your own self. Remember, this is the standard, not us. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes. That ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. That no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Thinking you're better than uh, someone else because you have... You know, what, walked with the Lord longer? No, 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 no. We are supposed to keep ourselves down. He's rebuking pride. Not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Remember, Paul thought of himself as the least of all saints, a sinner who is chief, high. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? And see, that plays into uh, how Abram, okay, he, again, went out of his way to bring about God's promise by his own doing. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? 
Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? I got this by my own strength. I got the, God allowed it to happen. Maybe, you know, when you have something like that, you boast, well, I worked so hard and I got this. Yeah. In the end thereof, what's that going to amount to? That isn't something that is of the spirit. Hmm? Finally got that big house, huh? Got that fine car. You got that nice suit. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. That's Paul's sarcasm, by the way. Now, you know how these prosperity guys talk about, um, you know, how God wants to bless you. God wants his children to have the best houses, the best cars, the be whatever. What about this? For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last. As it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. And don't these uh, charismatic uh, prosperity guys, metaphysical mind science guys, don't the lost people also look at them like, oh wow, look at them, these easy believism people who are comfortable in their sin. <clears throat> see these easy believism devils that's what they teach how for the lost people to be comfortable with sin to have peace with their sin that's what they want just totally contrary to the scripture for I think that God has set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men, and to angels. Uh, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The devils are fallen angels, remember? Ye are, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Look at verse 10. Look at that. The contrasts. The Corinthian church of God was very carnal, very worldly. They were what? We, the church of the living God, are fools for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. Because they had the best of everything. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. They're honorable because they took the world and their Christianity and tried to blend them together and they come up with what we got today. Satan did, I should say. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. But yet according to these prosperity twits, God wants to bless you and give you the big and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we blessed, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the, the gospel. Meaning that Paul was the one who brought the gospel onto these people. That's what that means. Okay. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Paul is our example on how to follow Christ. For this cause I have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, 
who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Not talking about a building, collection of people. Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them that are puffed up, but the power. The power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Not merely because you say you are, not because you can utter something in a monotone, Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. No, it's power. Remember what we looked at? They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof? What power is that? The power of the Lord in you to convict you and to change your life. So you be not like the world, that you be separate, holy, other. For the kingdom of God kingdom of God right here is not talking about the actual physical literal kingdom in Jerusalem it's talking about the spiritual for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power see so many people talk a good game but in works they deny him they have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof oh and I truly wish that some of you wicked devils were truly could would truly get saved. And all that energy you put into attacking Christ. What? How could? Oh, wow. Wow. What could the Lord do with you? With that energy you used to attack him. To fight for him. I guess we'll never know, will we? What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod to correct, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? Paul's like, look, you guys got some problems. We, you need to, you know, examine yourselves, prove your own selves, whether you're in the faith. to the scriptures. Yeah. How much time we got left? Ah. At three hours, that's the longest this thing can go. I was going to read, ah, 1 Thessalonians, ah, yeah, we can read that. We can read that. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1, and then that's it. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, one and the same. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, which we do daily. <laughs> Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren beloved, your election of God. Not the Calvinistic thing. Okay? Not the Calvinistic thing. The election of God. Your election of God. That you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, which is what the Lord chose. Okay? For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. They lived according to the Scriptures. What they spoke, they lived. Not just in the sight of people, but in the sight of God, who judgeth all things. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word 
in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. What example are you leaving, brother, sister? For from you sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. Because they walked their talk. They were genuine. They were real. Not fake. Not behaving one way because they're in church and then acting another way out of it. You know you're in church 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, right? I hope you do. For they, for they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. The wrath to come. The time of Jacob's trouble. Has delivered us. We're saved, born again, converted. When the redemption happens, the redemption on the purchase possession, the catching away, we're out of here. Then comes God's wrath. That's going to be it for this video. Very, very long, a little bit longer, but kind of have to take my time on. Um, May our Lord Jesus Christ be uh, magnified. I hope this helps some of you um, because you're, you're, you're witnessing a faith of flesh out there. And it could be hidden with a lot of people saying certain things. But there again, does what they say match and how they live? And what's, what's coming down the road here pretty quick, people? Crashing of the economies. This ain't over yet. You need to be, you need to be prepared. You've been warned about the psychological operation that's happening. You've been warned. How are you going to deal with it when it comes? What are you going to do? Thank you to all of you brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Uh, thank you so much for your prayers. Um, don't have the time, but um, my wife's feet are getting better. Thank you. Please continue to pray for us on that. And as far as the living thing uh, moving, the Lord has the Lord has made known to us what He wants. Not my will, but Thine be done. He must increase. And I must. Decrease. We love you. We pray for so many of you. And if you don't hear from me, like I said, I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of emails for nobody. Okay? Again, if I have not gotten to your email, please understand. Okay? So, anyway, we love you. Thank you. I hope, I hope this helps. I hope this is beneficial, uh, edifying. We've gone over a lot of things that we've gone before, but you know, brethren, we need to be ready. And in the position as the church of the living God that he has put you in, whatever it is, 
you need to shoe you need to work that out so others may see that we leave a testimony behind that's going to convict these people who are going to be left behind so that's going to be it for this video love you we will see you in the next video